Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to The Manic Geek. I hope you're all doing well out there. Today we are taking a look at uh, Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut pad, specifically the 38 millimeter by 38 millimeter unit cut to match AMD's AM4 compatible processors. Now, since this is just a, a flimsy black cloth, there's really not much to speak of as far as B-roll for the product itself. I will mention, however, holding this at hand, it the fabric feels like the graphite shavings from a uh, from a pencil after it's been sharpened, if you've ever held those in hand before. It's a really weird sensation. But anyway, we are gonna be testing this against the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste that I've been using since I started this channel. It's been the most consistent performance thermal solution that I have personally used, but it admittedly is a little bit on the messy side being, you know, paste. I also unfortunately run into some really unfortunate issues with my test bench where I tend to rip out the processor from the socket, you know, ZIF socket problems, I guess. But it's a little annoying because especially with the memory I use for my test bed, that untrains the memory, which means if I were to try and use this processor for comparative performance results, I wouldn't really be able to do that because I'm losing out on memory speed by not being able to run at my XMP profiles. So we'll go ahead and throw up some B-roll of some of the components that were used in the test bench system today, as well as the heat sinks that we used for comparative purposes. I do just want to point out each of these heat sinks was tested using both Noctua and TH1 as well as the Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut pad. Anyway, when we come back, we'll talk uh, user experience and conclusions. Okay, so as we can see, we actually got some interesting performance results here because it was actually the most consistent performer, the Carbonaut pad that is, on the all-in-one. Now on the marketing for this product, it would indicate that this is not necessarily the best solution for water cooling, but 
as this is technically a water cooling solution, is actually the most consistent performer. Not certain if that's attributable to the levelness of the base plate on this all-in-one, however. Now I will point out, you need to be very precise with how you line up this pad on your processor. If it winds up shifting over about a half a millimeter or so, you do run the risk of causing this fabric to tear as you apply torque to your heatsink. And that's something that was observable as of the first application of Carbonaut. I actually took footage of this thermal pad at every step of application from fresh out of the packaging through the first, second, and third applications for each heatsink. And what we found was that after rotating between each heatsink, uh, there was a tear that formed even just on the all-in-one, which was the first application I had with this, that remained persistent throughout testing. Now, as it turns out, the results were consistent enough between all of these heat sinks and repeatable enough that that tear wound up not really being a huge detriment to thermal capacities of this Carbonaut pad. But on a long enough timeline, you get enough of the wrong tears in this thing, it is gonna impact this thing's ability to perform moving forward. So the main thing here is you just need to be really methodical and precise with how you line everything up. Another thing I do want to note, however, um, because this thermal interface material is thinner than something like a paste would be capable of achieving when it's pressed between uh, your heatsink and your processor, I noticed that this maybe doesn't necessarily account for uneven surfaces as well as a thermal paste. Because even with uh, even with proper pressure being applied to something like this Wraith Prism heatsink here, this is using a direct contact heat pipe base plate, which means each of the individual heat pipes is of course directly contacting the processor. Also means there's some gaps in between those heat pipes where there is still material that's joining them together. Not entirely certain how much of the performance delta on this particular solution came from that, and the fact that there are three pretty noticeable pits in these heat pipes at the base plate of this. I'm not sure if that accounts for any of the performance difference here with this Carbonaut pad versus the NTH1. So yeah, my takeaway here is I, I basically got the question answered that I wanted to have answered going into this. Does a Carbonaut pad make sense for my particular use case? For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm still sticking with using Noctua NTH1. Um, ultimately, pricing difference between the two of these is negligible at best, and uh, even though this kind of on the surface is actually ideal for swapping back and forth between uh, a lot of different heatsink solutions really quickly, I unfortunately wound up encountering a bit of damage on this particular pad. And with it being physically compromised, I, I kind of don't feel confident in using this moving forward when doing performance test evaluation of a heatsink. Uh, and even and even on top of that, uh, the the two degree performance delta between using paste and this pad, it's not the actual end of the world. It's not going to necessarily make or break your ability to overclock with a heatsink, but. The fact that variability exists at all between the thermal solutions, I would rather eliminate that as a variable. As it is, I'm already not using the greatest test bed ever. So wherever I can eliminate variables in my testing, I want to. And this unfortunately becomes a liability now that it's physically compromised. But it's not to say this product might not be for you. Uh, it does still perform well otherwise. And in different testing environments, this may actually prove to be every bit as consistent as the thermal paste you're using. So sound off in the comments down below then. Have any of you uh, used or thought about using one of these uh, carbon pad thermal solutions? Also, if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth information as to how these are made and how they're actually functioning versus a paste, I'm gonna go ahead and link up here to the Gamers Nexus video uh, where they covered these Carbonaut pads and they did a really good job of explaining all of the nitty gritty of what's going on here. Anyway, toss the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Make sure you get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I upload fresh content for you. And I'll catch you all next time. So take it easy. Thank you.